Grain bins are for storing grain, and if not done properly, entering a grain bin can lead to devastating consequences for workers, families, and communities, including injury and death. Using best practices can reduce the dangers and protect not only the grain, but the most valuable of resources, our workers. Bin entry is a last resort, but when necessary, following recognized safe bin entry procedures will significantly decrease the risks of injury or death. These best practices, supported by both the commercial grain industry and farm organizations, are the focus of this video. Incidents of grain entrapment and engulfment continue at a high level, along with other casualties such as auger entanglements, falls from heights and electrocutions. These types of incidents occur on farms and at commercial elevators, affecting persons in every age bracket and are preventable. Best practices for safety are increasingly important as the amount of grain produced, stored, and transported continues to rise. On farms and at commercial facilities, more storage and larger storage facilities are being built, and the speed at which grain is moved is faster than ever. There are several reasons someone may enter a grain bin. To unclog a reclaim or discharge sump, check the grain condition, prepare a sweep auger for operation, complete final bin cleanout, or perform pre-storage repairs and maintenance. An understanding these reasons leads to greater ability to identify and correct hazards. It is also important to know and understand your local, state, and federal safety and labor laws concerning the hazards in your work environment and how to protect yourself and others. Farms and commercial facilities have the same responsibility to provide a safe work environment, regardless of the number of employees, Using recognized safe bin entry procedures and best practices will help ensure everyone's safety. Grain in good condition significantly decreases the need to enter a grain bin. Most bin entries occur because of problems resulting from out of condition grain. Out of condition grain will have one or more of the following characteristics. It may have a moldy, musty, or sour smell, or a crusty top, may be an unnatural color or an unnatural slope. If some of the grain has been removed from the bin, the natural slope of the grain is between 22 and 28 degrees, depending upon the type of the grain. For example, corn should be 22 to 24 degrees. Grain that is steeper than this natural angle of repose or has uneven slopes indicates a potential for hazards. Additionally, if grain was removed from the bin, but the grain surface does not show the removal. It indicates a dangerous situation where a crust may have formed on the surface, leaving a void underneath. Entering under these circumstances could cause the crust to break, allowing someone to plunge into the void and be buried in the grain. If potential for crusting exists or is suspected, anyone entering the bin must use a secured lifeline due to the risk of engulfment hazards. Never enter a bin with equipment running to get grain to flow if there is a potential entrapment or engulfment hazard. Flowing grain can pull a worker beneath the surface in seconds. No entry should be made if there are hazards present where a worker cannot be protected. Repair and maintenance of grain bins and equipment, harvesting techniques to reduce foreign material, and proper storage of grain helps maintain good grain condition. However, if bin entry is necessary, training, planning, and preparation must occur before any entry. Training is one of the most critical steps to safe bin entry. All workers should receive yearly training covering the facility's emergency action plan, hazards of grain handling, and the storage environment and how hazards can be eliminated, avoided, and otherwise mitigated. Anyone entering bins or acting as the observer should know the hazards which could be encountered in the bin, how to avoid, reduce, or eliminate the hazard, proper lockout and tagout procedures, their roles and responsibility, be trained in lifeline use, and trained in initiating rescue procedures. No one should enter a grain bin without training. Regular training for all employees, 
and maintaining records of employee training are highly recommended and benefits both the worker and the employer. Commercial elevators are required to have written policies and procedures that cover how and when bin entry will be performed, who is responsible for the permit or checklist, and when entry is prohibited. This is a best practice for farms. Commercial facilities must follow the OSHA grain handling standard, confined space standard, or a combination. This should be reflected in the policy and the bin entry permit or checklist. The Grain Handling Safety Coalition recommends that farms follow the grain handling standard as reflected in this video. Complete planning, preparation, and training before anyone enters a grain bin to help ensure a safe entry. This includes how to react in the event of an engulfment or entrapment. A safe entry begins with completing a bin entry permit or bin entry checklist which ensures all critical safety issues are addressed before anyone steps inside the bin. A crucial item on a bin entry permit or checklist is proper completion of lockout, tagout procedures. Evaluating the atmosphere in a grain bin is part of the grain entry permit or bin entry checklist. If potentially hazardous atmospheric conditions are suspected in the bin, it should be tested using a multi-gas monitor. A bin entry permit or checklist also requires an evaluation of engulfment hazards prior to entry into the bin. Check for indicators of out-of-condition grain. If towers or pyramids of clumped grain or sidewall buildup of grain are observed, do not enter the grain bin. Grain in this condition can suddenly dislodge or avalanche, knocking down or engulfing the worker instantly if the person is below the level of the grain. Only those who are properly trained and equipped should attempt to remove grain in this condition from a bin, and they must only enter above the grain surface. Companies that provide services for grain reclaim can be contracted to perform this dangerous work. After evaluating hazards, determine if safe entry can be made, and finish completing the bin entry permit or checklist before entering, including confirming the rescue equipment is readily available. Two people must be present, the entrant and an observer. Bin entry should never be done alone. Appropriate training has been provided to the person physically entering the bin, the entrant. The observer has been trained. The observer must be present during the entire entry, monitor the entrant, remain in constant contact, either visually or verbally, or through the use of a signal line or other means, and know the procedures to initiate the rescue plan and know how to call for help. The observer knows never to enter the bin, even for a rescue attempt. All persons are equipped with the appropriate personal protective equipment for their roles. The entrant is using a secured lifeline or other protection that prevents sinking more than waist deep in grain when there is any potential engulfment hazard. A proper lifeline system is secured by anchor points, managed by the observer, and includes a mechanical device that grabs and locks the lifeline if there is a sudden jerk or pull to prevent the entrant from being entrapped more than waist deep. Simply holding a lifeline or tying it onto the bin is not effective and does not protect the entrant. Once inside the bin, continue to evaluate for hazards and be aware of the grain's condition as it may change. Out-of-condition grain can create bridging, cavities, and other hazards which can cause entrapment. These simple steps will prevent the majority of injuries and deaths associated with grain bin entry. Entry into the bin varies slightly, depending upon whether it is from the top or the side of the bin. Top entry is through the entry hatch near the edge of the bin roof or elsewhere on the top of the bin. There should be a properly guarded platform and a guarded outside fixed ladder or stairway used to reach the hatch opening. During a top entry, the entrant must use a secured lifeline, a bosun's harness, or other appropriate lifeline solution. Side entry is through a hatch found on the bin sidewall and located anywhere above ground level. The side entry point poses additional hazards if it is reachable only by a portable ladder and does not have a platform. Installing a platform with guard rails is the best solution to avert fall hazards. If using a portable ladder, observe ladder safety rules, including correct ladder length, positioning, and climbing using three points of contact. 
Attaching a lifeline to an anchor point at the side hatch is effective only if the level of the grain is low enough to not allow the worker to sink more than waist deep. If the bin is being entered for the purpose of installing or using a sweep auger, OSHA guidelines for guarding and working with energized equipment need to be observed to avoid potential for entanglement in a sweep auger or being knocked down by flowing grain. These are best practices for farms to follow. Many entries can be performed safely without a lifeline if there is no engulfment hazard. When grain is at the natural angle of repose, appropriate lockout, tagout, and or guarding measures have been taken for the task being performed, and the worker cannot sink more than waist deep, an engulfment hazard is not considered to exist. Failure to shut off unloading equipment and lock out and tag out their controls prior to entering a grain bin is the leading cause of engulfments, which most often results in death. Lockout tagout controls energy to equipment. Lockout tagout is simply the procedure of shutting off all power to any equipment which could be turned on while a person is in the bin, putting a lock on the power source control, and placing a tag indicating the equipment should not be turned on until the lock and tag have been removed. Lock out and tag out any equipment which could fill or empty the bin, such as gates, conveyors, and grain legs, as well as any equipment which poses a hazard. A final step of lock out tag out is to try out. Check to ensure the power is shut off by turning the equipment on from any control that could energize the equipment. Lock out tag out is done before anyone enters the bin. Lockout tagout is required by OSHA for commercial elevators and is a best practice for any farm. A common hazard in side entry is stepping into an unguarded sump or reclaim hole. Permanent or temporary guards for sumps or grain reclaim holes can be easily made and installed to prevent entanglements. Eliminate entanglement hazards by guarding all moving mechanical parts. Replace broken and missing guards. Guards should follow the auto principle. Protect body parts around, under, through, and over. This includes sumps and sweep augers. Oxygen can be displaced by combustion gases from engine exhaust or welding processes. Fumigants and carbon dioxide produced from deteriorating grain can also displace oxygen. Air in a grain bin should have an equivalent of 20.9% oxygen found in our natural atmosphere. Use a multi-gas monitor to ensure proper oxygen levels and detect toxic gases in a bin when there is a potential for poor atmospheric conditions. If there is any concern about oxygen levels or an atmosphere test failed, operate ventilation fans prior to entry until the atmosphere tests safe and conditions are eliminated. No one should enter the bin until the atmosphere levels are normal. Continue to ventilate the structure and monitor the atmosphere while someone is in the bin. Many activities can reduce the unsafe conditions that require the need for bin entry and can be done before storing grain. Eliminate hazards prior to filling the bin. Thoroughly clean the bins and check the seal between the bin wall and the concrete foundation. Repair or replace any seals which are deteriorated. Check the bin walls and roof for any sources of water leakage such as holes and rust deterioration and repair these to prevent grain spoilage. Ensure ladders, safety cages, stairs, railings and platforms are in good repair Check that all working and climbing areas are free of cords, debris, and spills, which can lead to slips, trips, and falls. These incidents account for the most injuries in the grain handling environment, costing millions annually in medical expenses and lost time. Inspect the facility or storage structures regularly to look for areas needing repair or maintenance, including structural integrity of bins, silos, and tanks. Thoroughly inspect electrical systems, including power cords, for damage and other hazards. Harvesting grain in ways that enhance grain quality is important and frequently overlooked as it relates to grain bin safety. Combine fan speeds, concaves, and sieves should be adjusted to ensure the maximum amount of grain is retained, but with the least amount of foreign material like pods, stalks, and damaged grain. 
foreign material can clump together in a bin, increasing the chances for spoilage and plugging bin sumps. Screening the grain before storage can also help reduce foreign material. Coring the bin helps to redistribute the fines and foreign material which accumulate in the center core. Remove 5 to 10 percent of the grain from the center, then add it back to the bin. Flatten out the grain on the surface to assist in airflow patterns to manage grain quality. Drying grain properly before storage and maintaining recommended moisture levels reduces spoilage and potential bridging and clumping. Keep grain cool and aerated during storage, taking advantage of cool temperatures to operate aeration systems. Install temperature cables and check grain frequently to determine what measures to take to avoid grain deterioration. Alternatives to entry should be explored and tried before someone enters a grain bin. Many methods are available to reduce or eliminate the need for bin entry and to ensure a safer entry process. A best practice is to check grain frequently during unloading a bin without entering in order to discover clumping or a pyramid when it first appears. If this condition occurs, return grain into the bin until only a small portion of the pyramid is exposed above the surface. Using correct bin entry procedures, a worker can more safely enter a bin to break up the grain. To avoid entering a bin to break up towers, alternate between returning grain to the structure and unloading the grain. Sometimes, just waiting overnight or a few days will allow the grain to fall naturally. If the flow of grain stops because of a clogged sump, open and close the gate several times. Open a secondary sump if the bin is designed to do so. Run the fans for a period of time, as that may allow the clumped grain to crumble and flow. Or from the outside of the bin, or inside the tunnel if the bin has one, poke a pipe or rod through an opening to break apart the grain. When rotting the grain, all hazardous mechanical equipment must be locked out and tagged out. Grain vacuums are a common method to remove grain from bins, especially if the sump holes become plugged. However, engulfment hazards and other bin entry procedures need to be addressed while using vacuums. Be aware vacuuming grain from below anyone's feet could pull that person under, and engine exhaust can create a hazardous atmosphere. While using a grain vacuum in a bin, lockout and tagout procedures still need to be followed for all other equipment. Communication to the person outside controlling the power to the vacuum is critical and must be maintained. Other alternatives include the use of compressed air aimed at clumps and towers to break them up. Vibration systems have been successful in hopper bottom bins, and remote control devices have also been developed to clean out bins. Additionally, there are companies which provide services to assist with clogged bins and other issues requiring bin entry. Strong consideration should be given to these professional services if problems are encountered removing grain from a bin. If constructing a new bin, inquire if the manufacturer can install larger sump openings, which can decrease clogging issues. Most importantly, in a time of unloading problems, rushing into the bin is never a safe alternative. Becoming complacent to the hazards around you can result in an incident or leave you unprepared to respond rapidly during an emergency. An emergency action plan focuses on being prepared to effectively respond to an event or incident. Grain storage operations need to have an emergency action plan that is known to employees and practiced. It is recommended the plan be written, and for some facilities, it is a requirement. Additionally, pre-planning and or practicing with your local rescue squad is recommended for commercial elevators and large farm operations. Commercial elevators must also provide equipment for rescue operations, which is specifically suited for the bin, silo, or tank being entered. Separate rescue equipment is not needed for each bin, but should be nearby, in good condition, and able to fit through the opening of the structure. This equipment requirement is also a best practice for non-commercial grain storage operations. The Illinois Grain Rescue Tube smartphone application can help quickly locate the nearest grain rescue tube if one is needed. The app is available for free, downloaded at iTunes or Google Play stores. Bin entry is a last resort, but when necessary, following recognized safe bin entry procedures will significantly decrease the risks of injury or death. 
If bin entry must occur, use the following best practices. Use a bin entry permit or bin entry checklist each and every time prior to bin entry to ensure hazards have been identified and reduced. Lock out and tag out energy sources to all equipment. Check the atmosphere as needed. Use a lifeline when engulfment hazards exist. Most importantly, never enter alone. Always have an observer present in case something goes wrong. These simple steps will prevent the majority of injuries and deaths associated with grain bin entry. Handling and storing grain is a vital and important role. It brings food to the table, feed to livestock, products to the store, and fuel to our machines. It is difficult and hard work. Grain bins are for storing grain. If not done properly, entering a grain bin can lead to devastating consequences, including injury and death. Using best practices can reduce the dangers and protect not only the grain, but the most valuable of resources, our workers. This presentation was produced by the Grain Handling Safety Coalition. Information about the coalition and resource materials are available at www.grainsafety.org.